Hey everybody, it's your buddy Graphic back with another video and today we're going to be jumping straight into a new support build. I want to give you guys kind of an idea of what I believe is one of the strongest support builds for dungeons and expeditions. So when you're going for a support healer build, you are obviously going to need that life staff. However, what other weapon will you want? Well, there is a lot of people that like the Warhammer, they like Sword and Shield for the tankiness, and they also like Ice Gauntlet because of some of those slows that you can provide. However, I will say one of the biggest things is debuffs in these expeditions, providing, uh, you know, low lower damage for the enemy as well as also increasing your uh, really damage to that mob or to that boss or whatever you're attacking in that PvE expedition. So we're going to take a quick look at today a healing build using a life staff and a hatchet and why this build is probably one of the strongest healing builds for expeditions. We're going to jump into it today with first off a tribute. So with the tributes here we do see 475 available to spend. Let's just say we have around this amount. This should be close to maybe 50 or level 60. You should be able to get close to that 300 intelligence, depending on obviously gear and uh, you know what you're really going about to uh, focus. Obviously going to be one of those that you're going to want to get to 300. If you actually take a look here, we are going to be at 300 focus now, and you're going to see a ton of bonuses. So when, uh, you're actually going to get 10% mana regeneration rate, 10% fishing line tension. We don't really care about the fishing in the yield uh, when going gathering, obviously, at this current point in time because we're focused on a great support build, healing build for PvE dungeons. But it is going to talk about, like I said, 20% healing output, 20% duration on casting buffs, 30 per, uh, plus 30, sorry, mana on any self or group heal, and then also... When your mana hits zero, gain 200% mana regen for 10 seconds and 10% cooldown reduction for in fast travel. So all this is very, very nice. Obviously, most of this relying on focus to continue to be very, very useful. And the rest of it, we're just going to throw into constitution. Every, anything you have left, throw into constitution. The last one we're going to grab here is going to be 10% uh, really two crit damage taken. So it's going to, you know really minus that 10% to crit damage taken and you're going to take a little bit less damage from that boss. You're also going to have increased max health by 10% of your physical armor and all healing consumables last 20% longer. It would be pretty great if you could get to 250 constitution. That's where you're going to see a minus 80% damage reduction when full health. That is a massive amount. Definitely very, very helpful in these large dungeons with huge damage uh, you know, output. So just keep that in mind. Your goal should be about 300 focus, 250 constitution, and then anything after 250 constitution, you want to put right back into focus in my opinion. Now to get to some of those weapons and talk about what you want to really go with those weapons. So the first off obviously going to be the life staff. This will be a little bit a little bit more obvious in my opinion at least uh, of which you want to go. So we have life staff 19 points available and let's start it off with one of the most obvious in my opinion orb of protection. We're going to actually click all three of these going to provide you that uh, shoot out a light projectile that grants 15% fortify for 20 seconds, heals an ally for 10% of weapon damage, and deals 146% weapon damage when it hits an enemy. We're also going to use the bend light. Very, very useful after a dodge roll. Your heals are 20% more effective for 5 seconds. So definitely understand your build. That's one thing a lot of people don't do. They don't read about their build. They don't understand what their build is all about. And that's going to obviously cause a lot of uh, damage, really healing, I guess, decreases out in the open world. So we also have Beacon as one of our options here that we're going to select. Beacon is going to be one of those that shoots out a light projectile that deals 146% weapon damage to enemies, attaches to its target, and then heals all nearby allies for 20% weapon damage each second for 10 seconds. We go down all the way, and we are going to select all these besides Speed of Light. Speed of Light is going to increase haste. We don't really need movement speed in the dungeon as much. We're also going to get Glowing Focus, so buffs you grant last 20% longer. Going to be very, very strong in PvE dungeons. We also have here at the top Absolved selected right now. Live Staff's Light and Heavy Attacks no longer take mana, and we're going to take also Mending Touch. So with Mending Touch, we're actually going to need to take uh, you know, this actually Sacred Ground first, or you can actually go a couple different ways with this. So I actually didn't select Absolved. Let me select Absolved for us. But we have Mending Touch. Like I said, we're going to take that. That Life Stack's Heavy Attack now removes one debuff when passing through an enemy. Debuffs are going to be very important against some of these ma major bosses as well in the dungeons and expeditions. We're also going to take Sacred Ground. Sacred Ground is definitely one of those that a lot of people understand has very, very large, large potential. So create an area on the ground that lasts for 15 seconds and heals 20% weapon damage every second. We go on a little bit farther. We're going to get holy ground. We're going to grab blessed. We're going to grab desperate speed. We're going to go over here and we're also going to grab revitalize. So revitalize is going to be another one that does when you hit with light attack, reduce all your cooldowns by 5%. 
cooldown reduction is going to be huge in this build. It's going to allow you to continue to put out damage, really not damage, more uh, more or less just buffs, debuffs, and also providing a lot of heals. We also on this right, or sorry, this left side, we're going to be able to see that purify heal for 30% more when you heal an ally below 50% health. That's the one we're going to be wanting to work towards, obviously going to require 10 points in uh, you know this previous row. So we're going to select Sacred Protection. Sacred Protection, while holding a life staff, increase the base health of all friendlies in your group by 10%. Going to be very, very solid for this PvE gameplay. So we have all of these actually selected now. And I do want to say, you know, a majority of people are going to want to use Purify. Like I said, Purify is going to be a very, very strong passive for a lot of people to use. I just want to give you guys kind of my thoughts on this build. And as we move forward, you know, I want to talk a little bit more about Purify and why I believe it's such a strong ability because healing 30% more when you heal an ally below 50% health. Obviously, you're going to be spending time healing allies below 50% health more than allies above 50% health because you're going to be focusing, obviously, on the weak allies. So just keep that in mind when using this build. I do want to jump over to the next one now. Let's remove all of this. Let's go back to the weapons and let's go to the hatchet. So a hatchet, like I said, is going to be the second one you're going to be using for a weird, um, you know, I guess weird thing to think about is a hatchet coming into a life staff build because a lot of people suggested, like I said, a tankier sword and shield build, maybe a warhammer for CC, or even maybe a ice gauntlet for that uh, slows as well. So CC there as well. But in the protector side of things, we are going to actually take a look at uh, the hatchet and it's going to be all throwing. So actually this is a very, very easy one for you guys to understand. So rending throw, throw an ax dealing 110% weapon damage. The big thing going into this is applying rend, reducing targets damage absorption by 10% for four seconds. So we're going to be selecting that and we're actually going to be selecting everything on this side. I'm going to read everything here at the end, but just very important to select everything on this right side here at the very bottom persistence uh, hindrance is actually going to be successful throwing axe hits extend all hatchet debuff durations by two seconds going to be very very strong we're also going to have throw an axe forward and dodge backwards dealing 100 or sorry 120 percent weapon damage and slowing targets by 15 percent for three seconds and then you just have the effective throw reducing or you could actually read into this it says throw an axe that deals 130 percent weapon damage and triggers disease and weakens target for five seconds disease reduces targets healing and efficiency by 30 percent we can reduce his target's damage by 10%. So a very large debuff there. Yet again, showing you why you want to be running this hatchet lifesteal, or not lifesteal, life staff build. Definitely, like I said, a very, very strong one. And you're going to obviously want to understand the monster types as well. When you go into these dungeons, understand that there are certain ones where you're going to be stronger, uh, you know, going into these as a PVE content. Um, you know, you're going to be able to see weak too, as well as resist. And you're going to be able to see this, like I said, with those dungeons. So you can actually take a look here, the dungeons being Amrine Excavation, Monster Type Ancients, Strike, Lightning, and then you have the resist of Slash, Nature, and Fire. So a lot there, and you can continue down and see all these. We will have a dungeon guide coming out, an ultimate dungeon guide going over each and every dungeon and kind of explaining some of these things here in a little bit as well. So keep I guess keep an eye out for those in the next couple of days as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys like this way of going over this guide. Really, this healing build is insane for expeditions. I think we are going to see a lot of people starting to really utilize this in higher level dungeons, you know, maybe 60, 65 dungeons where you're really starting to need that, uh, you know, solid build to actually complete the dungeon in a good, timely manner. So thank you guys again for tuning in. If you have any questions, comments about the build, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on.